Welcome to Reading and Labeling Rhythms. You have uh, found this on YouTube or via makingmusicmakesense.webs.com. That's this, uh, this website up here. Um, and you can find a trans video transcript summary of this video, so all the main points and everything else written down um, on, as a download on this website, Making Music Makes Sense. The home page looks like this. If you go to um, Assignments and Handouts, uh, you can see under Four Students, Downloads, you can see Video Transcript, Fifth Grade Chorus, Reading and Labeling Rhythms. Okay, that's what it is, and if you click it, it opens up and it'll be a PDF file that you can print out, and it looks something like that. Okay. Um, reason it says Fifth Grade Chorus is because this is produced for... Uh, the fifth grade chorus at University School in Shaker Heights, Ohio. Uh, so reading and labeling rhythms um, is one part of reading music. Uh, we've talked about pitch in a previous video. Um, and the other thing, if you're singing, uh, you've obviously got to process the words. And you've got to do all of this in real time when you read music. And it's it's a lot of brain work. Um, Pitch, rhythm, and uh, um, and words takes takes a lot of effort uh, to get it right when you read it through the first time, and even uh, skilled musicians can have trouble uh, processing uh, very complicated rhythms and and uh, pitches and things, uh, pitch patterns. It it is challenging. It's not something that you uh, you master quickly. Um, it takes a lot of practice. So stick with it. Uh, and hopefully this will give you some uh, sense of um, how to go about doing it. The the f first thing uh, we have to do really is to uh, um, look a little at some theory, uh, and I'm I'm sorry that uh, we have to we have to do that. Uh, before we do this, I'm just going to play you this top line so you can hear it. Okay, uh, so you can hear hopefully that uh, you had some longer notes here, uh, a couple of quicker ones here, and all of these were the same. Uh, that's because, well, you know about note durations. Um, when you combine note, different note durations, you get rhythm. Underlying that rhythm is something called beat. And beat is something that stays steady. Often it's the same all the way through a piece of music. It can ebb and flow but and get faster and slower. But uh, um, often it stays the same. And beat is uh, can be found, let's say for now, this is not always the case, but for now we can use this thing here, the time signature, uh, to determine... Um, what the length of our beat is. Uh, the time signature, if you, uh, well, we'll do a little review, but um, you can sing the time signature song to yourself um, to, as a refresher. Uh, but um, this, this thing, this number here, this one we say 4-4, four, four. this one we read it out as 2-4. These functions as fractions, and it really helps when you're working out rhythms to know your math and uh, understand how to add up fractions and things. Um, but this, this time signature, this fraction, tells us that there are four quarters, four quarter notes, in every measure. And I'm clicking on measures here. It's this uh, space between these lines. It tells us in every measure there, there is music that adds up to four quarter notes. Okay? Um, it also, for like I said, for the time being, we'll also consider this as telling us what our beat is. So there are four quarter notes in every measure, and it, we'll take the bottom number as our beat. So we'll take a quarter note as our beat. Generally speaking, when you've got either 4-4, four, 2-4, four, four, or 3-4, um, you can be pretty certain that a quarter note will be the beat. 
So what you'll do is you'll take the top number and you'll count up to the top number. So in this one we have 4, in this one we have 2. So we'll count up to 4 as we go through each measure and then we'll start over. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the idea is to make each one of these the same length. Okay. Uh, this is a half note and a half, as you know if you can add up fractions, is worth two quarters. So it would last through our first and second beat, and this uh, second half note here would last through our third and fourth beat. And the reason we have these uh, notes here in parentheses is because the, this note is still continuing through the second beat, but something new doesn't happen on the second beat. And here we have uh, something new happening on the third beat, but nothing new happening on the fourth beat. So it's held across the fourth beat here, held across the second beat here. Uh, the same thing happens here. In 2-4, you can see it's the same in this last measure here. We, we only go up to 2 in 2-4. Two, 1, 2, 1, 2. We'll get to the and in a minute. 1, 2, 1, 2. But you can see the 2 here is in parentheses because that note lasts through that second beat, okay? Um, <clears throat> so these these two notes here are longer, as is that one. This here, uh, said we get to the and, or the plus sign, we say we generally say and. Um, this is where we split the beat. So instead of going, uh, we, instead of sort of tying beats together and it lasts for more than a beat, this lasts for less than a beat. So convention <clears throat> is that we use a plus sign to split up the uh, second beat. So <clears throat> what we do is we, um, uh, we put a plus sign to split the beat into two eighth notes. So this rhythm here is one, two, and three, four. Okay, so the one, two, three, four kind of stays the same. Uh, but we, so the beat stays the same, but we alternate the rhythm um, according to how long the notes tell us to, to play it for. So I'm just going to speed this up a little bit so it doesn't take quite as long. Um, and we'll listen to this again. So we'll count it out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. Okay. Uh, if we uh, if we continued, actually, let's continue. Let's do the two. So we're only going to be counting up to two. One, two, one, two, and one, and two, one, two. Okay. And the reason we only count up to two is because it says two, four here. All right. And that's really about it uh, for uh, half notes and eighth notes. We put an and over the eighth note. We say that the eighth note is off the beat because it doesn't anything that falls and is emphasized between where the numbers would uh, occur if we were labeling everything is said to be off the beat. Now we're going to go down here. This is probably going to look a little scary uh, if you're not too familiar with um, looking at sixteenth notes and things, but. Um, these are these are sixteenths. These double lines here, these double beams, um, are sixteenths. If uh, um, you can see, actually, there's a little one here with uh, two flags coming off the side. If you join those up, they become beams like this. And sixteenth notes are half the value of an eighth note. And often they are grouped in groups of four, so, and, and a group of four sixteenths would last the same as a quarter note. And this, you know, you, you know, uh, because we've done note durations. Um, and we're going to split, so you can see how when two sixteenths uh, uh, joined up, you have an eighth note. So that's why you still we still have the and sign here, the, the plus. Um, on every third sixteenth, because these are these are eighth notes apart. Okay, the one and two and three and four and. Okay, now what we're doing is we're adding notes in between. We're splitting it again. So here with up here, what we did is we split the beat. Now what we're doing is we're splitting up these eighth notes. So we've got sixteenth notes in between. So instead of just 
1, 2, and 1, and 2, or 1, and 2, and 1, and 2, and, if we had just eighth notes, we have 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and, okay, so that's, this is uh, 16th notes that happen pretty quick, and these can be a little intimidating when you see all these black lines and things, and um, it, it, it looks quick, and uh, it just takes a little practice getting used to it. Um, there's, there's no real way around um, thinking about it. You just, you just have to do it. Uh, and uh, clapping these rhythms and having a demonstration is often the best way of, of attaching what it means. So I'm just going to play this through, first of all. Okay, that was probably, certainly this last measure was a little intimidating. Let's just do that again. Okay, so you could hear one e and a two e and. Okay, so you, this, let's just focus on this for uh, firstly. You can see that the, um, in the group of four sixteenths, the first one is, you know, it's always on the beat, so that gets a number. The third one is always on the eighth note. It lines up with an eighth note, okay? I mean, if I did this, and then this, turn that into an eighth note, you can see the first and the third one, I mean, the first one lines up with the beat, so the third one lines up with the eighth note. So that's, that's why it's one and, and then we're just uh, splitting up each one of those even further. So the second sixteenth note, Often, this is convention. I mean, it's not, you know, you can, all sorts of ways of doing this, but this is one convention. So the second 16th note is um, an E, and the fourth 16th note is an A, uh, okay? One E and a, two E and a, all right? Da, 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 da. All right, you can still feel that pulse of the, the beat going on. One E and a, two E and a, one E and a, two E and a, okay? Um, and the reason I have two or a pair of notes happening at the same time, okay, notes when they're lined up above each other or below each other always occur at the same time, all right? Um, the, uh, the reason that I've written all this out is so you can see a stream of 16th notes along the bottom here, but I've tied some together. And the reason I've done that is because it, the, the tied notes last as long as the notes above them. So you have two sixteenth notes tied together here and an eighth note here. Okay, same here. Here you have a dotted eighth which lasts as long as three sixteenths or a eighth and half an eighth because you know what a dot does. So um, there's your three sixteenths and then the last sixteenth there. Here we have an eighth note in between, sandwiched between two sixteenths. Um, and here we have this dotted eighth uh, starting on the second sixteenth as opposed to right on the beat. Um, so all of these tied notes last as long as the note above it. And I've written this out so you can see why we don't need, I mean you could put the A in parentheses here or the E in parentheses here if you wanted or these two here. Uh, but you don't need to, um, and the reason you don't need to is because this note lasts through the third and fourth sixteenth note here in this group, okay? Three E and, that lasts there. Four through that second sixteenth note, and a, okay? One, a, uh, two E, a, uh, three E, four E and a, uh, okay? Then we're back to four sixteenths at the end. So I hope that makes sense. I mean, that's that's really, again, that's really about it. Uh, now, that's the theory. I mean, it's simple, but it takes a lot of practice. So there will be uh, plenty of practice in class, um, and there's really no substitute for doing it. Again, if you want to find a transcript of this um, video with all the main points, if you go to makingmusicmakesense.webs.com, and you can see video transcript here, and this is what it looks like. So, uh, well done, um, and come and see me if you've got any questions.